Have you noticed how everyone has a mission statement these days? From schools, to government departments, to companies, to businesses, to shops. I looked up a few examples this week. Some of the big companies, Facebook, give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. Coca-Cola, to refresh the world in mind, body and spirit to inspire moments of optimism and happiness through our brands and actions. Don't you love how they've kind of pinched the Bible language? Something closer to home, life-wise, connected, just and inclusive communities. The Ministry of Education, our mission is to lift aspiration and raise educational achievement for all New Zealanders. Our city mission next door has the most down-to-earth statement that I came across helping people in desperate need by providing excellent integrated services and effective advocacy. Sounds a lot less like a religion and a lot more like a place that gets things done. I think the bigger the company you are, like Facebook or Coca-Cola, the more they sound like a religion. But in today's gospel, we get to hear Jesus' version of a mission statement. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbour as yourself. The commandments and the laws that were laid down in the Hebrew scripture covered all aspects of life, from the food you ate, the clothes you wore, to economics, to welcoming the stranger, caring for the family, the widow, the orphan, worship, anything you could think of, there was a law or a rule that went with it. And some people argued that all the rules were equal, so you needed to keep them all in in an equal way. So making sure you didn't mix wool and linen in your clothing, which is something from Deuteronomy, was as important as the commandment not to steal or not to murder. Hence the question from a lawyer to test Jesus. Remember, in this run of readings we're on at the moment, we're still in the temple, we're still in the week before Jesus' crucifixion, and various groups are still trying to trip Jesus up. And so the lawyer asks, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus' answer is incredibly simple. Love God, love neighbour. Everything else, he says, recorded in the law and the prophets, everything else hangs on these two. Love God, love neighbour. So as Christians and as church communities, we don't need to look any further for our calling, for our mission. Our reason for existing is to love God and to love neighbour. And when Jesus quotes from the books of Deuteronomy and Leviticus, as he's doing, he's not talking about emotional love or the feelings of love or being in love with someone else. He's talking about action and ways of being, ways of being in relationship and in community. To love God meant to honour God, to worship God, and to want to live out the ways of God. To follow God in co-creating a world where life flourishes. From the physical world of our lands and oceans to the flourishing of humanity. If we love God, we love and protect God's creation. If we love God, we love and protect our neighbour. We live connected to the earth and connected to each other. And then we gather as a church community to express our love of God in our worship and in our relationships with each other. And our faith communities are pretty interesting places. I still think there is really nowhere else in our society where an otherwise disparate group of people come together for a common purpose. School communities probably come close. A Rotary Club might come close, an environmental action group maybe. There are many groups and many communities where people gather. But faith communities of any religion bring together people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all ages and stages, 
all seeking something. Seeking to do what? To find a way to respond to that call to love God and to love neighbour. Look around at the people around you. Yeah, go on, look around at them. Look at them, backwards and forwards. They're a pretty mixed bunch, aren't they? Some of them you know the names of. Some of them are complete strangers. Some of them are visitors from overseas just for today. And yet we're all here for worship, which we do together in community. We can't do worship on our own. And here at St Matthew's, we have the added strength of not being from one suburb or one part of town, but drawing people from across our city. People are still dribbling in this morning because of the marathon. It's a challenge to get here sometimes on a Sunday morning. And while being from all over the city is a real strength, it does bring us the challenge of figuring out how we are a faith community outside of the 90 minutes that we're here together on a Sunday morning. Are there things that we want to do together or is it enough to be strengthened in our worship for our lives of ministry across the city? How much do we want to take action together? And if we do want to take action together, how do we, do, how do we discern what that action might be? These are the kinds of questions that our vestry, our leadership group, have been grappling with on our behalf for a while. Each generation of church leaders has to do this work again and then again, building on the work of our ancestors in faith and building on the work of the people who, who came before us. The current work that we're doing dates back to the parish day that we had at Vaughan Park in 2015. And since then, we've been nutting away at that question, how might we be called to love God and to love neighbour? And rather than coming up with a 20-page strategic plan with 100 goals on it and lots of KPIs, we've instead affirmed our vision of wanting to be a spirited place where people stand, connect, and seek common ground. And then we've been working at creating a structure within which we might work together and discern our pathways and actions. And you'll be hearing more about that in our parish forum after our service. But an important piece of this work has been the establishment of the new role which Kate has been commissioned for this morning. Three years ago, we struggled to even afford a half-time priest assistant and now we're in a different position, and Vestry are moving forward with confidence. They have nonetheless taken a bit of a leap of faith, a leap of faith that your giving is going to continue increasing to support our budget. But they've taken that leap of faith because they know that your ministry needs support and facilitation. We clergy are not here to do ministry on your behalf, but to facilitate and support your ministry. If we want to follow God's call to serve our city as a faith community, then that call needs support and work. So having two clergy actually means that you all get to work harder as we encourage you rather than us doing all the work. Didn't know that, did you? You're all going to have to work harder. The call is for us all to love God and to love neighbour. And we're going to continue this conversation after our service. But I want to finish this morning with the words of Jan Richardson. This is called a blessing for those who have far to travel. And it's a blessing for Kate, but it's a blessing for all of us. If you could see the journey whole, you might never undertake it. You might never dare the first step that propels you from the place you have known towards the place you know not. Call it one of the mercies of the road that we see it only by stages as it opens before us, as it comes into our keeping step by single step. There is nothing for it but to go and by our going take the vows the pilgrim takes, to be faithful to the next step, 
to rely on more than the map, to heed the signposts of intuition and dream, to follow the star that only you will recognise, to keep an open eye for wonders that attend the path, to press on beyond distractions, beyond fatigue, beyond what would tempt you from the way. There are vows that only you will know, the secret promises for your particular path, and the new ones you will need to make when the road is revealed by turns you could not have foreseen. Keep them, break them, make them again. Each promise becomes part of the path. Each choice creates the road that will take you to the place where at last you will kneel to offer the gift most needed, the gift that only you can give before turning to go home by another way.